All right, everyone, welcome back to another MDG Media production. This is Euro Tour stop number four, the Swedish Open. We are here at the Ulma Gardens Disc Golf Center in Boras, Sweden, just 45 minutes east of Gothenburg in the south of the country. I'm your host, Nate Perkins, and I'm here with my good friend, Elias Lukanen. Elias, what do you think of the Uma God and Disc Golf Park? What's up? It's uh, certainly a wonderful, a little bit of a shorter course than we play usually on the tour. It's one of the shortest courses we actually play all year. So we take a look at the players, obviously Paul Macbeth, coming off from a second place finish at the Grokkola Open. Hopefully looking forward to improve on that. Nicholas Antila took down Conor Piste. And what do you think about Nicholas choosing to play over here on the Euro Tour versus back on the Disc Golf Pro Tour where he's gained some traction? Yeah, I believe it really tells about European Disc Golf making a bigger case of being actual as, a, as competi competitive of a tour as the US Tour, as we saw. The local Josef Batty, really famous player, actually I believe his hometown. And uh, another Swedish player, Jalmar Fredriksson, only 15 years old, one of the most promising young players in the entire Europe right now. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to get a good look at his game, I have not seen him play in person yet. The hole one is one of the more demanding shots on the course. It's dead straight, 123 meters. There's OB all along the right, and there's OB deep of this one. Now we showed up to the course on Friday, and the wind was just ripping. It presented itself as a left to right wind here on the first, maybe the slightest bit of tailwind. Yeah, really difficult to know how the disc is going to fly in this wind since there are some trees on the left side of the fairway kind of blocking that complete blow. Beach, California, Paul Macbeth. Common play on this hole being something straight like a fairway driver. I believe Paul is doing just that and uh, keeping it relatively low here which is a common play for many players because it's easy to fade left at the end of the shot since you're going kind of this tiniest bit of hill kind of over Two this tiniest Finnish bit of champion. hill at the middle of and the flight. 2021 European champion from Finland Niklas Antila. Nicholas is always a pleasure to watch. He has such a unique walk to the front of the tee pad, one of the slower run-ups that you'll see. And that's looking absolutely gorgeous there from Nicholas. But you can see the slight downhill slope at the end of the fairway, the disc skipping to the left side. That's and a very common result, landing card. at 10 meters on the left. Sponsored by Kastafas. Representing Emer Frisbee, Josef Berg. Josef always walking around the course with a big smile on. He's been one of the better players in Sweden for the past few years. And he's got a very high scoring potential. He's got all the shots, good power on both backhand and the forehand, and also has this very spinny putts and when he's on he can make it from anywhere for example him being there at uh and the one player two might not be a problem sponsored by latitude 64 and ching a two-time swedish junior champion Jalmar Fredriksson. 
And this hole does not set up great for the lefty, especially with this ripping left to right wind. He's got to ensure to turn this over. And he did just that, actually turned it over too much, gets a favorable little kick back out into the fairway. And we are off. Yeah, and that's a good good kick there from Yelmo. Let's see if he runs it from there. Elmar is actually one of the more aggressive putters. His putting style is this very direct, powerful spin putt. So looking forward to seeing him make some longer putts throughout this round. Paul giving that one a half go. Yusuf gonna run this. Mm. Just a bit short from 12 meters, and Nicholas just inside the 10 meter circle here. Yeah, this would be a great start. It's actually the fourth most difficult hole on the course as Nicholas gets the great birdie. Certainly a hole that you're happy with if you take the par. But the birdie really goes a long way if you're trying to shoot some of the hotter scores of the day. Yeah, and that was a great putt for Nicholas. I believe he had direct tailwind on that. Not the worst wind to have on your first putt of the day. A little bit surprised to see Paul with uh, just a t-shirt on, since this was certainly one of the chillier rounds we have played so far. It was only about 18 degrees, and as you said, the wind is blowing, so it's not that warm, actually. All right, hole two, super short par four, guys. Look, just 110 meters. Most players are throwing a backhand through this little gap right here, and you want to kind of push that OB on the right side if you can. It opens up your angle as you're heading back inside this mandatory tree this is honestly one of the easier holes on the euro tour you just have to get out of that gap and you are home free yeah many players are playing some sort of a overstable actually a driver even for this short shot trying to play it on a lot of hyzer and skip to the sweet spot as actually niklas is doing just perfectly he would like to get a little more distance to open the angle to the green a lot more, but that's only about 45 meters to the basket, so everything's okay there. Paul also going driver, getting a bit more distance than Niklas, and that's going to open up his angle all the more. Yeah, Paul actually might be so far that he might even opt to go with the jump putt from there. So really showing the shortness of this par four. Did you see anybody attacking this hole ever off the tee? There are rumors that in practice, some people have gone through an early high gap. So you can kind of go over the trees on this hole if you want, but it's really not a tournament play. And again, another hole that doesn't set up too well for the lefty. He has to force that turnover up the hill, bending it late, and he does so just short of the out-of-bounds. So Josef here just trying to play into position. He does that well, only about 35 or 40 meters left of the basket from there. It's just okay. Now, Nate, what do you think? Is this the shortest par 4 we actually play all year? It has to be one of the shortest par fours I've ever played. But, you know, it still has that bit of tension to it, especially with the wind, like kind of ripping tail left to right as you approach. You you can go deep of this pin pretty easy. And if you don't commit, you could miss the Mando. So I, I think it's okay to have a short par four like this as Nicholas tosses that sea line tactic up there. And he's actually gone a bit deep. Yeah, I think the distance control here is certainly a bit tricky. And Paul actually is going with the jump putt. And one thing that we kind of talked over was Yalmar actually throwing a forehand with his right hand. So Yalmar has this very interesting combination of throwing backhand with the left arm and uh, forehand with the right one.
A very relaxed delivery right there from Yalmar. 15, you say? Yes, 15 turning 16 in, uh, I believe, just in a short period of time. Niklas there with, I believe, an inside the circle miss, just barely inside the circle, but it's good to note that this green is very windy and those 9 meter pots are certainly not easy. As you can see, even the heavy flag kind of flapping around in the wind. Really short walk to the tee of hole three and the shortest par three that we're gonna see on the course today, just 75 meters playing slightly downhill. Sequence of gaps that's five meters across, so plenty wide. There is out of bounds left, deep and to the right. But honestly, at this level, we should be seeing these players get this into the circle. Yeah, this is just a routine shot for everybody on this card and pretty much everybody in this tournament. Problem is, if you leave it a little bit short or go long, you can either be OB long with your first shot, as well Paul is certainly not worried about that. And uh, But if you leave it a little bit short, maybe hit a couple of trees on the way, your putt is directly towards OB. And we see Yalmar pull out that right hand forehand once again. Looks like he's got really good touch with it. Yeah, that's interesting to see him go with that, but I, I like it. And look at this, Nicholas opting to go over the top here. What do you think about this play? I'm honestly shocked about this. I would have never thought that Nicholas would be the player to do this. There is, in theory, a chance to go over the trees. As you can see, he's, well, in far circle too. Actually, almost OB right. I believe he did stay safe there, but that's a crazy play from Nicholas, especially since he's a very good straight putter thrower. And that was an unfortunate little roll backwards too, and Yusuf going with the Berg there, his namesake. The skirts just past the tree, and that is part. Yeah, Yusuf absolutely loves the Berg, he even putts with it, and uh, one of the best Berg throwers, I believe, in the world. This is a scary putt from Nicholas. Kind of towards OB on the left, but hits the band. That's a good run there. Certainly not the result you're looking for in this hole, though. No, certainly not. He's going to go par on, on the two easiest holes on the course. Oh, and Yalmar just, again, a very upright in the upper body and just kind of walks that putt in there like it's nothing. Yeah, incredibly solid putter and uh, being played with Yalmar a couple of times, I feel like he's never nervous on the putting green. It's always a very confident, solid stroke as it looks like Niklas is going to take the only par on the court. That must be really disappointing. This hole is actually the second easiest hole on the course. so. Certainly one you want to pick up, and I'm sure Niklas is kind of blaming, blaming himself for going for that hyzer route. All right, hole four is another short par four, just 158 meters, but it has this very challenging kind of pinch point. You can see there is a mandatory on the right. You have to go to the left of that tree, but that back wall that you see is all out of bounds. So you need to throw a setup shot just short of that mando, or you can try and throw this forehand or lefty hyzer around the mandatory and up the hill. Once you set yourself up, you really have like less than 80 meters to this pin, slightly uphill with a few wide gaps to hit. So another one that really you should be expecting a birdie on this hole. Yeah, this course really starts off with many easy holes in a row and you can see Paul going with that sidearm. This looks a little bit inside, challenging the man though. I believe he did just barely stay short of it, so does not miss it and uh, might have a difficult angle to the green since he didn't quite make it past the man though. Yomar going 
over a stable mid range here. And I honestly think that's a pretty good play. He's right there at the drop zone. You just aim at those trees, you hit them, you push through. If not, you're still safe and you can attack. Yeah, that's just uh, just a perfect position there. And being a little bit more, a little bit further away from the gap means that you don't have to throw that much upwards. So you have a, actually a straighter shot, the green. Yusef, I believe, going with the Barry again. You can just see how little glide that disc has, but still able to trickle long OB. That's really unfortunate. Just centimeters OB there. Nicholas going forehand here. I believe that's new FD3. And that is well thrown. That's past the mandatory. Perfect position right at the base of the hill. Yeah, that's a good shot there. And from here, it's you can really choose from many gaps. You just have to miss at least one tree, and uh, and you should be home free. Yalmar going for that left side gap. I believe he pulled it a little bit too far left, but he's still well inside the circle there. And with his putting abilities, I believe that should be not a problem there. Little flex forehand left for Yusuf and kind of burns it over into the ground. He'll have a circle's edge look for his par now. Got Tuomas Hitianainen on the bag of Niklas. Yeah, Paul actually was far enough around the Mando to craft himself an angle, and that's just a beautiful shot, really showing off that experience. And you can see how many times in his life he has thrown that patent pending. I believe he's actually one of the best in the world at throwing that patent pending shots. Nicholas, a little tactic in that was a bit of a misfire, but sneaks through inside, nearly caches it. He'll have that left for his second birdie of the round. It's a fun course to play, huh? Yes, certainly. It's uh, very satisfying to hit these lines. And as we see Josef running it from circle two. Certainly a rare course, because as we said, it's the shortest one I believe we play all year. And... uh Pretty much none of the holes require any distance, maybe more than 100 or 110 meters. And that did not accept his putt. Little low, little left. That is on the strong side for him, but these disc golf park baskets tend to not like the low putts, especially with that shallow cage. And Nicholas in for birdie and unfortunate bogey there for Yusuf. Yeah, once again, not certainly a hole that you want to bogey, but unlike the prior two holes, this is actually not one of the easiest. It's pretty much middle difficulty being eighth most easiest hole in the course. We're headed into the signature hole here at Umargaden. Downhill, 219 meter par four. It's got this sweet sign in the backdrop, name of the city, Boras. Pretty demanding tee shot. It descends about 20 meters from the tee to the green, so significant downhill and it's only maybe 10 meters wide the whole way. So if you get this nose angle wrong, you can just hyzer off into the woods on either side. Some players go and driver, kind of giving themselves a circle two look. Other players just chipping halfway down this fairway. 
Yeah, it's really all down to the what the player w is comfortable with. As you can see, Paul going with that understable fairway there. Really easy to flip this disc over to the right as Paul is doing, as you're throwing so far downhill with the nose of the disc so far down. So discs tend to act way more understable on this downhill. But I believe Paul will still have some sort of a chance for the birdie from there. Nicholas, a little high out of the hand, but that was a great stability. Hits the tree and drops down into that ditch. That's a great spot to approach the pin from. Yeah, that's. I believe that's only about 40 or 50 meters left there. So a pretty long shot. And uh, this is a difficult lefty hole once again, since you would kind of like to fade into the left side heel side. You can see Yalmar struggling with it, but he drops down into the fairway and we'll actually have a really long but makeable approach from there. Beautiful shape there from Yusuf, turning the catch cam. Headed all the way down to the pin. We're gonna have to wait and see exactly where that one's at, wow. Yalmar still has over 150 meters. Yeah, 150 meters playing much closer to maybe 115 as he turns it over to the left. Maybe a little bit, a little bit worried about fading right as the right side of the right side woods are certainly a bit worse than the left side. And that is an incredible gallery here on Friday in Boras. Whoa, Sweden showing up. I believe that's Paul's pitch out after just flipping that fairway off onto the right side. Yeah, unlike I predicted, he did not have any sort of look from there. Just showing off how thick those right side trees can be. Yalmar with another precise right hand forehand there. Really interesting to feel like it's a really a thing that many lefty players do, having that left hand backhand and a right hand forehand. As we see Niklas just with a tactic again, really good touch there, just five meters. And we are walking up to see where Yusuf's drive was, and we're headed into circle two here. All right, we are pin high, Elias. Come on, Yusuf, let's get it. Oh, that's a disappointing effort, but I'm sure he wanted to get that one, and I'm sure all of the all of this crowd wanted to see the eagle. Yeah, that's definitely the best drive I saw all week. Good par putt from the ditch for Paul. He's three under through the first five. This is Niklas to match that. Yep, he's good for it. Yeah, and uh, even though this hole, as we saw, is very reachable, we actually did not see an eagle during round one. So I really hope that we might get one of those on, on coverage, but at least somebody in the tournament would get it, because I think that would be just such a cool story. As we see, um, Yusuf also just tapping in for the birdie there. All right, and we head into the woods where we will stay for the rest of the round. Hole six, it says 91 meters. It probably plays closer to 120. This is a full rip up this hill, basket up onto this stump. It is a beautiful green. There are ferns unraveling all around it. There are really two trees in the center of this fairway. You have to pick a side if you're going to go to the right of the center tree or you're going to go out wide and flip it late. Yeah, I feel like most of the players are, you know, throwing something understable 
usually actually a distance driver, as we saw Niklas throwing a fantastic shot, getting all the way to the shelf. It's really rare to see somebody land there. But yeah, as you saw, he went with something really understable to try and battle that steep uphill slope. Same thing for Yusuf here, although he unfortunately hits the one tree in the middle there. That's that's deep. That's very deep and going to be a difficult scramble. Oh, great angle for Paul. That needs to climb and just doesn't get over the last log there. Difficult 12-meter putt coming up for Paul. Yeah, certainly going to be very much uphill. And already from that angle, you can see how hard he has to throw that disc to get all the way to the basket. And even harder for the left hand as you don't get Anheuser Glide uphill, but Yalmar just throws an absolute bomb through the middle of the fairway. Yeah, that's a good display of his power, just going pure hyzer up this hill. This is a terrible spot. He finds a window, nearly hits the chains right there, and he's going to have the death putt coming back for his par. Yeah, that's a incredible run, but going to be even scarier of a putt. He's looking at the edge of the shelf, and if he misses that, I mean airballs that, it's likely to be even outside the circle. Paul for the great birdie here. Oh, just half a rotation more gets the nub. That is a calm and collected putt for his par right there from Yusuf in front of his home crowd. Nice little moment. Yalmar for birdie. Yeah, very solid putt, absolutely bangs it in the middle of the pole. And I gotta give a shout out to the crowd. They were very loud and they had an incredible sound. You know, you rarely see such a clean sound of a gallery when they're applauding. You could really hear it on every part of the course for this feature card. And uh, Niklas there with also great birdie. And two birdies and two pars on this hole is an incredible score, I bet. Maybe no other card was able to do that. And Nicholas is on a turkey heading into hole seven, 112 meters. Moving significant right to left here. There's one tree you have to decide if you're gonna try and cut it inside it where the drone's headed. Most shots are moving outside that tree and you really need it to glide out. It's not just a pure hyzer. For the right hand player, you kind of have to flip this one up and ride the back wall and then fade late. Yeah, that's very true. And most of the shots here that are good, you can see landing maybe just about 10 meters short. So it's really difficult to park this hole. Nicholas going with a very high route, which is the only option if you want to park the hole. But uh, I believe he caught some trees at the late gap. Actually, for lefty, this hole, I believe, is possibly even um, not easier, but more possible to park, since you can get that left left hand uh, turnover gliding towards the basket. The Almar turns it over too much, and uh, well, certainly, even though you can park it with the left hand, it's certainly not an easy left hole once again. This looks nice from Yusuf heading around that back wall. Uh, gets a late tree. That'll be 10 meter putt right there. Yep, very common result there. Throwing a good shot and ending up at 10 meters. But I uh, believe he's got high confidence after the last putt, so... Might as well make that. As Paul looks to be flipping this up just perfectly. That's a great line there. And uh, maybe possibly even inside the circle. That was an incredible shot. <laughs> Nicholas has been known to make those lately. Those circle three looks. 
Yeah, Nicholas, I feel like he's got uh, circles for days. Circle three, circle four even, and uh, I believe sometimes even circle five almost. Let's see if Yusuf can get this birdie here. Unfortunately not there. And Paul sticks it on the left side for the lone birdie on hole seven. A pretty specific shape here that you have to hit if you want to card the birdie. There's a couple holes at this course that are like this. Kind of these pushing hyzers right at 110 meters. headed into hole eight a couple of ways you can play this one there is this huge hyzer off on the right side that kind of pu pushes out over the ob and swings back in late and then there is this pretty touchy low ceiling straight shot maybe four meters across right there it plays slightly uphill plays maybe 108 meters on the distance here. And then the, you can see there's OB that kind of wraps around this pin. Yeah, OB is really close on this hole. So many players are looking to leave this a little bit short rather than going long or even parking it. Let's see what Paul does. Going for the straight route, something slightly understable, trying to skip it all the way to the basket. You can see that's the common result, leaving it a little bit short, but still within putting distance. Nicholas just puts that on a rope. What a shot, man. He's so much fun to watch. Yeah, this is, uh, I believe this is an absolute gem of a hole for Nicholas. And pretty much the whole course really suits his game. You know, being able to throw those touchy wooded shots. Elmer is fading towards OB after the tree hit. And uh, I believe he does just barely stay safe there. That could have been a disaster. Okay, I was waiting for the hyzer. Yusuf pumps it out there. Wind not really helping this one swing back. It kind of prevents it from swinging as there is left to right here. But he'll be just outside the circle. Yeah, maybe this is not the best day for the hyzer, but... Um Certainly still a good play as we see Paul Macbeth from circle to dead center chains. You can see the gallery absolutely loves that. Yusuf hasn't quite found that release point from that distance today. Nicholas to match Paul. He's five under for the round. They're having a, themselves another battle. We got to watch them battle at Euro Tour stop number two at Kona Piste. Nicholas actually went on to win that one by eight strokes. So you've got to believe that Paul is that's on his mind. You know, he he wants revenge on the young Finn. Yeah, I'm sure Paul would not like to take two two losses in a row against Nicholas. But it's very possible Nicholas is one of the most solid wooded players, I believe, ever from Finland. All right, we're moving into hole nine. It was playing as the second hardest hole on the course. Very demanding tee shot here, swinging from left to right. You, again, can't just throw this one on hyzer. You need this to glide out. You need a lot of distance off of this tee if you're going to attack the second half of this fairway. And this is just classic Scandinavian golf for you guys. Dense pine forest. Mm, just a beautiful 222 meter par four. Probably my favorite hole on the entire course. Yeah, it's a great hole and you can either choose as Paul takes a weird stop there, maybe just faking his friends you can either choose to go with the backhand and bite a little bit more distance, trying to get that turnover and flex back at the end, or you can also choose to go with the forehand hyzer, which is a bit of a safer play. As we see, 
pole kind of fading out at the end. That's the common result with the backhand. It's really difficult to keep that turning to the right all the way. This is the safer and more consistent play. Although Niklas does pull it a little bit to the left, that's not an ideal shot there. Sets up pretty well for the lefty here. Oh, and look at that early wind bounce kind of affect the disc. Yeah, it's a decent spot right there. Yeah, didn't quite get the ultimate carry to the right, but that's certainly a good drive on this hole. It's playing as the second most difficult hole on the course. Playing above a half a stroke over par. So really difficult hole. And if you take a par here, it's certainly no catastrophe. As we see, Yusuf also trying for the backhand turnover. Hits early, but stays in the middle of the fairway. So that should be pretty much fine. A little setup forehand for Nicholas, and that is still in jail. You can see just how dense it is if you're off the trail here. Yusuf also just pitching that one out decent angle to approach from yeah it's such a long wooded hole and uh, the fairway really never gets any wider than what it is at this point in the middle of the sweet spot so it really demands extreme control of the angle and the direction of the disc all the way till the end now uh, you can see Yalmar was flying on the fairway but a little bit low there so he's still gonna have a bit of a tricky approach from about 40 meters And Paul just pitching that one back out. Right, we've got three or four demanding approaches right here coming up. We're going to get a good look at why this one is playing so hard. And Yusuf sneaks through, gets a little kick into the circle there. Yeah, that was a great shot there. And you can see even the green is a little bit sloped behind the basket. So really difficult green for putting. Really want to land close here, and Nicholas with a beautiful patent pending shot there. That is so nasty. Off balance with all the trees in front of him. What a shot. Paul has the cleanest look for his up and down. And just rockets that one, pushes it a little straight, kicks down to outside the circle, I believe. Yeah, a very scary pot. He's looking right at the, at the slope behind the basket. Elmar here, obviously just laying up, really no running it from there. Uh, this is a scary putt. If you miss this, you're likely to be rolling outside the circle. That's so frustrating. That's going to be his first bogey of the round. The bogey band. Oh no, Yusuf pulls that one right after a couple left side misses. It's back on the pole there. Unfortunate bogey after a beautiful approach. Yeah, our feature card really showing why this is the second most difficult hole on the course. It's so far and so much woods that there's just a lot of trouble to be had. And uh, the fact that we see a couple of bogeys and a couple of pars is really not surprising. It's one of the most rarely birdied holes on the course. And that's a wrap on our front nine here. Taking a look at the leaderboard. Nicholas Antila, Dennis Augustin, Emil, Paul Macbeth. Five under was the score to be on the front nine. Appreciate you guys tuning in to MDG Media. Leave us a comment. Let us know what your favorite hole on the front of the Umer Gardens Disc Golf Center. Yosef Betty, his hometown. That's too cool to have the Euro Tour roll through your hometown. And from Elias Lukonen. Nate Perkins, we will see you soon for the back nine of round one of Eurotour stop number four, the Swedish Open.